And of course, you know, to the, the extent that you feel comfortable sharing, what about your own personal journey with psychedelic substances? Well, I was, um, first of all, I think a, an a important part of my personal journey that might help some people also is that for a long time, I didn't feel like I was ready. So a lot of my peers and friends were doing it when I was in my, in high school and my early twenties and stuff. I just felt like, you know, I'm not really stable enough. And I was in therapy and I just felt like, you know, I'm not really ready. And I think that's perfectly valid. Psychedelics are not for everybody. Yes. So I think if you really feel like you're not ready, that's fine. You can do it later or not ever do it. It's, you can get psychedelic type experiences. And that's something I'm going to be talking about later in this, mm -hmm. in this talk. Mm -hmm. You can have psychedelic type experiences, not using drugs. So then mm -hmm. I was in college and um, I did a little bit very small dose. I was like, oh, wow, I could see the, because I've been studying spirituality for a long time. So I started to see and experience a lot of things I've been reading about. And then I got into the Grateful Dead. And then it was like, wow. Oh, and I started it. doing psilocybin and I got these experiences like, oh my God, God is in the body. Just these, you know, these visceral experiences of the divine in the body, which, you know, I think a lot opened me up to Tantra. This is visceral experiences and you know people think that's recreational use and look down their nose and i would beg to differ it's very uh the grateful dead was very spiritual experience for most of the people who went um and fun too what's wrong with that and, and then um and then just uh pro that my usage fell off for a long time i felt like i had for a long period of time really learned what i needed to learn and then you could come back to it at other times in your life Yes, absolutely. And this is, yeah. And I really felt like um, my experiences, um, I felt like those experiences, my experiences working on locked psych wards with really mentally ill, insane people, um, calming them down, talking with them, um, <clears throat> helping people through all kinds of crises, um, it, you know, throughout my career, working with people who were very, very bad off and as I said, having psychological crises or freaking out, or um, I felt like that really uh, qualified me in a special way to be able to not be faced by anything that psychedelics might bring up in something else, in someone else. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I felt like that was a special way to, that uh, special skills that I had to be able to bring to helping someone understand, helping someone be, not be afraid, first of all, of what's going to happen in the psychedelic space, but then also being able to help them integrate afterwards with what does that mean? Uh, does that affect your sense of spirituality? Did we bring up some material from your psychological past? <clears throat> what kind of work would be really helpful for you now to not just, I mean, the what's called recreationally, but the, the celebratory, expansive, ecstatic uh, parts of psychedelic are healing in and of themselves. Ecstasy is healing. Mm -hmm. But then how do we bring that back down to earth? We talked a little bit earlier about uh, the fast track and people, a lot of people who call now are, they read Michael Pollan's book. They want to do one session of psilocybin. So they don't ever have to go to therapy. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It doesn't oh really goodness. work that way. Oh my it goodness. <laughs> yeah. There's still, so there's, there's, um, you can get those big tastes, but then the work, that's just the beginning of the work. You know, it's like, how do you bring this higher consciousness into daily life? You know, there's this old saying, and I think it's then, where they say, after enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. So it's like, after you have these enlightening, ecstatic experiences, then you come back to, got to make your lunch, got to clean the closet out, you know, you just got to do your daily life. And how do you infuse that, uh, what you learned on psychedelics or any ecstatic experience, how do you infuse that into your life? Because what we often do until we understand that is we get really bummed out and depressed afterwards because it's like, oh, I want that high again. That's called addiction. Mm -hmm. And when we just mm -hmm. want to start chasing the high. And mm -hmm. um, so how do we uh, go through our life chopping wood and carrying water, as the, they would say, to infuse more love, more ecstasy, more higher consciousness and share that with other people?